All right, so here's my attempt to revive these um, two-year-old batteries, RV batteries, that I was using for the off-grid power system. Remember, it came from the RV. So I have four of these here, which are 109 amp hours each. But because they're lead acid, you can say roughly 100 amp hours. So I had 400 amp hours with 200 usable. So it's 200 amp hours, you know, when they're working fully, roughly 200 amp hours of power. But um, lately, it had not been making it through the night. And I know I'm not using up 200 amps, you know, overnight. I'll have to do a full calculation, but I'm sure I'm using less than 200. So which means the batteries weren't doing so well. So I took apart the, the system from the RV, and right now I'm trying to jolt them to get the batteries to be revived. Now each of these batteries, when I brought them out and I uh, hooked them up to the, uh, the inverter here to see what the voltage on it was, they were reading 12.2. Um, we can say it's 14.3. Each of these that I've tried to charge up were hitting 14.3, 14.4. So I think that might be the uh, maximum it'll go up to. And then you know, it should drop back down after you remove it off the charger, which is basically I'm just jumping it um, from the good vibrations of the car there. I just have the positive to positive, negative to negative. And so this one looks like it might be fully charged at this point, roughly about five, 10 minutes to charge it up. So what we're gonna do is hook up the last set of batteries, show you what I'm doing here. So I've got this one here, which I'm going to unplug these. So I take my, this is the, the positive. So this is gonna, this is the positive connection. So I'm gonna hook it up to the positive on here. And this one's the negative. So I'm gonna hook it up to the negative here. And I'm gonna turn it on and see if this is the last battery set that I need to do. We'll turn this on and it says, um, you can get this 12.2, I don't know if you can see that, it's not too clear, but it says 12.2, which is what all of them were saying. So what I'm gonna do is try to uh, charge it now by taking this, the negative over here, hook up the negative and the positive here. And you can see once I hook it up, the, the meter jumps immediately to 1314. So I'm just gonna let it go up a little bit to like 14.3, 14.4, which is what they were all reading once. And then once they stay at 14.4, 14.3, it's pretty much fully charged. So the question will be, will they actually hold the charge? Typically what I found when the, the battery is fully charged, it'll read roughly 13.8. That's after you remove it off the alternator. So when it's fully charged, it usually reads 13.8. And then as you use it, you know, a 12 volt battery, if it, it should be at like 12.8, 12.8. But when it drops down to like 12.1, 12.2, you, you're pretty much discharged. And at that point, you need to recharge it. Otherwise, you, you, you run the risk of damaging the batteries. So I don't know if I've damaged these or not, you know, because it would run all night. But, of course, the power inverter, the same one that I have in the RV, it shuts off, you know, and just beeps when, when the power drops too low. So they were all reading 12.2. That's when that thing shut off. So I was trying to protect the batteries. So maybe it did protect the batteries. So right now I'm, I'm manually charging each battery through the car's alternator to try to send enough voltage out here to hopefully jolt it back to life. Now I, I see this one, well when the fan comes on on that one, I guess to cool down the car, it pulls some of the power from the, the charging. So when that fan stops, we should see this jump back up. So right now it says 13.6, see how it jumped up, 14.3. So it's probably pretty much fully charged. You can see it took like five minutes or so to fully charge the battery off um, the alternator. Um, I know some people that are hooking up their vans and stuff, they're into hooking up solar power and whatnot. But it takes a lot longer to charge off a solar panel than it does off the uh, inverter. So, you know, if you want to do like a stealth vehicle, it's actually better to charge off the inverter. I mean, not the inverter, off um, the alternator in your vehicle versus hooking up a whole solar panel system on your roof, which gives away that, you know, it's not a normal vehicle. 
So a little blue didn't have solar panels for the longest time, but then because I had access to the used solar panels, I went ahead and installed a 200 watt solar panel, which is actually perfect for uh, living in a vehicle. I mean, ideally you would want about 400 watts because that would allow you to cook off solar entirely using you know 400 watt power to run a 300 watt rice cooker. So, but with a 200 watt and a, a battery bank, you know, this battery and that battery, which is roughly 200 amp hours, 100 usable, uh, that's enough to run a rice cooker and cook your meal each day. And then you can charge it back up off the alternator as well as off the solar panel. And if you're running the solar panel while you're cooking, you know, the car could be turned off and it, it shouldn't drain the battery too low because the solar panel is putting 200 watts back in while you're pulling 300, so only 100 is being pulled from the battery to cook your food. Anyhow, I think it's fully charged at this point. So typically a, a charge, it says 14.3 and it's staying at 14.3. I don't know if you can see that. 14.3. But typically a, a battery that's fully charged, I've seen, will say um, like 13.2, uh, 13.4, you know, like really charged. But 12.8 is actually a um, fully charged 12-volt um, battery. So we're going to try it now by unplugging the, everything. I'm going to shut the car off because no need to keep running the car now that we don't need it to charge anymore. So we're going to turn everything off here. And then, um, then what I'm going to do is see how much, how much those, those, um, those batteries have retained on their charge without the uh, the car running so let me unplug all this stuff you can see i just basically had it hooked up like you were jumping a car so at this point right now let's take a look with the the power off it says 12 6. so this one says 12 6 which means it's not it's not 12 volt fully charged fully charged it should say at least 12 8. so it's not holding it's not holding the power, but it could be maybe I didn't let it sit long enough. Because I think what you're supposed to do is slow down the charge rate as it starts to near, you know, fully charged status. And obviously the alternator, I don't think, does that. It just gives it a quick jolt. But because it says 12.8, I mean 12.6 and says 12.8, that means my battery bank, if they all say 12.6, either my battery bank is not holding the charge or I need to get a better charge controller. Now, supposedly, the charge controller I have in, on the RV, it steps down, you know, to give it a better charge. But obviously, it wasn't holding the charge completely because if the battery bank's only charging 12.6 instead of 12.8, it's not fully charged. So let me see what the other battery says. And if they also don't say, if they don't say 12.8 um, and they all say 12.6... Okay, this one says um, 12.5. So it says 12.5. So it basically is not getting fully charged. If it's fully charged, it should be 12.8. And I suspect all of them are going to do that, which would explain why my battery bank is not making it through the night. They're only going up to 12.5, 12.6. And then that means that you know, it drops down 12.4, 12.3, 12.2. Then the system shuts off. So it's not making it through the night. So either the, the battery bank um, is not being restored through this process. Or, um, you know, I might try it with a, a better charge controller instead of just charging it off jump-starting it. But um, I might try that. I might just hook up one battery to the solar panel with the charge controller on there, which supposedly cycles through to try to get it uh, fully charged. And see if that brings all these up before I put it back into, hook all these up into one big bank and then use it to, to run the solar power system. So let me see what the other one here says. Turn this off this time so I don't blow a fuse. But yeah, that one says 12.5, not 12.6. So it's obviously lower than what it should be. And let's try this one here. So red to red. And we're going to turn it on. Let's 
is 12.4. So this one has even less of a charge. So even though it said um, 14.3 or whatever when we disconnected it, the power actually, I don't know if that's leaking from bubbling. <laughs> and let's look at the other one. If they're all not holding a charge, then they may be um, pretty much at this point not not able to hold the charge, which means I need new batteries. Oh shit, shit. Okay, negative to negative, positive to positive, so red to red. Okay, let's take a look here. Oh shit, what? Okay, that was a bad connection. It says 12.5. It's like cutting. I don't know what's going on. It's making sparkling sounds. So it wasn't a good connection or something. Red to red, black to black. And I'll try this again. Twelve five, so it's between twelve five to twelve four, not even twelve eight. So my battery bank's not holding a uh, full charge. So at this point, I know my batteries are are not no longer um, working correctly, and I may have to, if I can't revive them, I have to reduce the load that I put on them. So I might split and make a new bank, and split the power into two solar power systems because I don't want to mix brand new batteries with the old ones that aren't holding a charge because if you do that I think the old ones actually weaken the new one and um, that would damage my new battery so I might set this battery bank aside and just use it on less you know like less lights or whatever to run instead of trying to run everything and that way it charges up and has enough power to make it through the night to, to run the lights and everything else and that way I can still be somewhat useful because each of these batteries right now, I don't know, at Walmart's probably over 100 and I know I bought them at like 100 115 dollars and that was two years ago and now with the price of everything going up it's probably more that's about 400 dollars right there so I'm going to keep using them until they don't work at all so at this point because they're not holding a charge I'm probably because I thought of taking it in my car and charging it while I drive to work so it charges longer and that might revive it I don't know if it's worth it. So at this point right now, I think I'm just going to hook it back up as one battery bank of 200 amp hours usable. But it's really not 200 because obviously it's not holding a full charge. And then what I'll do is I'll split the load of power and have two separate banks and use it to run, you know, run, out, run the lights and stuff off two banks. That way, if it can make it through the night off two different banks, because basically I'm going to get some other set of batteries and use that. Because I have some old batteries, you know, that I can hook back up. The, the idea is to try not to spend extra money unless I have to. Uh, I'll keep you guys posted, so stay tuned.